So I went through hominins, Lucy, Homo erectus, just a couple more things I want to get to really quick. Uh, that little bit of language. Everyone that back then called them cavemen. I have no idea why this puts it right here. That's just so weird. So many little weird stuff going on with computers. Took me three times to log on to finally connect with this. So I have no idea what's going on. And Homo erectus, so just a couple things in really quick. Homo erectus start here, but you see it very quickly spread throughout at least the Eastern Hemisphere. So this is where they get someone called Java Man right here. They discovered the early 1900s. And mm, spreading out through here, but they're quickly adapting. And one thing about this, the hominids are quite cruel. And so, so with it from that, I just knew it started there. So we didn't get to this on Friday. Did we Homo sapiens? So Homo sapiens, sapiens wise. So one step above this, you start seeing basically the flatter foreheads. In fact, that probably was a uh, flatter forehead, foreheads, a little more brain power, change the mouth, able to communicate, a uh, few things such as that. We talked about, um, on Friday about sweating and how that changed things. And Homo sapiens, we have two different common ancestries or they have two different things that come out of the same common ancestry, Homo sapiens and Neanderthals, or Neanderthals. So we didn't get this right. We did not do this on Friday. Okay, so Neanderthals. And so about the same time, a little bit after, or around from Homo sapiens, and from Neander Valley, a tall named valley, but for English speakers, you can also call it thaw. It's not that big of a deal. And, you know, five, five, maybe a little bit taller, the first what they saw were really stocky, but it appears that that could have been someone quite old and their joints were, were swollen, you know, arthritis. They appeared not to be quite as stocky as we now think, even though they did have a little bit of a flatter forehead. Their vocal cords were not, or they didn't have the throat to, to really the, the vocalize as homo sapiens sapiens down the road. But you're going to see a lot of Neanderthal sites here, but soon we're going to see them all throughout the Eastern world. And they were were quite successful until the next phase would come and they had really big brains bigger brains than we have now big brain does not necessarily mean you're smart but they were incredibly intelligent compared to other competitors so they wiped out other competitors meaning other hominids almost certainly and then they would be wiped out they too were nomadic they were hunter gatherers but sometimes they would stay in one place Women probably did the gathering, men did the hunting. They did make tools. I should add most of the tools that we see are for hunting or fighting. The ones that men probably made, the, the tools that women made for gathering and farming and storing food were probably things that dissolved, so we don't know as much about that. Um, we, do, we have found knives. We have found spear pits. Spear pits, get a fire going, take hard wood and basically keep spinning that pointed end so it becomes rock hard in the fire. Spear pits out how you make a much sharper stick. A few other things they have, they did have shelters. We found examples of this in France where a ring and then a shelter. And so therefore, not that there was enough shelter, but slightly more permanent. So you have the idea of going from ring pit area to ring pit area and rebuild their shelters and move along with their food or into the winter to hunker down. And they clearly had groups as big as 50, and therefore they were cooperative. They had to have some kind of uh, language. They did practice medicine. There were signs of surgery, uh, removing, let's say, tumors, stitching. Um, there's one of a brain, maybe even brain surgery. I'm not really sure. <laughs> Just, Slice open the head and go at it, but they were much more advanced than than what originally thought about the Neanderthals as being basically these big, thick men who uh, were either cannibals or scavengers. No, the Neanderthals were much more advanced, and they did bury the dead. And there are examples of them putting 
We had very few possessions as we would think about it. Possessions with them, which could only mean one thing, the idea they would have them in the afterlife. And so the Neanderthals were pretty advanced, but they did not have the language skills as their main competitor. Their main competitor, please be the right one. Oh, and we found some art work. Here are handprints of Neanderthals and of Cave in France. And so pretty advanced. We're going to jump right to here. No. Their direct competitor, same common ancestor, to be called Magnum, which would eventually become Homo sapiens sapiens, meaning very wise. And you notice they're a little bit later, and Neanderthals could not compete. Could not compete. Flat brows, tall, lean, could run faster. Their language skills, probably uh, by longer head, allowed for more, allowed for a longer learning to allow for speaking. And what happened to their competitors? They disappeared. Homo erectus was probably outcompeted by both the Neanderthals and the Cro Magnum man. And Neanderthals, we don't know exactly. Probably the best two guesses were best two things were they were just driven into hiding and murdered by the Cro Magnum man for a hunting area, or probably a combination of that and they just intermarried and you know, all just this intermarried and adopted the more, uh, the more dominant characteristics of Cole Magnum Man, and they're gone. And one thing about hominids, they are cruel, <coughs> they are ruthless, and they have no mercy towards competitors. You'll notice other animals with common ancestors, they don't, they're not near as cruel. I guess that's something to do with the cooperative nature, we're going to knock out our competitors. And these are the different skulls. You can notice how much bigger the brain of the Neanderthal in the white. And my last, I like this cartoon too. Meaning they have competitive advantage in mating too. I just thought this was kind of a clever one. So they had tools such as hammers. They used hoes, so therefore they were beginning of cultivation. It probably wasn't think about, don't think about in terms of planting seeds yet, but crops they wanted, they would remove the weeds out of crops they wanted and hope they were planting again next year. But obviously that's coming. They have pretty advanced fixtures. They were using needles and therefore they had clothes. One of the biggest is an axe. Now, cro had something like an axe, but an axe that was much more effective. You can imagine once you have an axe, you have a combination of fuel with the big e bigger structures, and you start seeing the population chromatic, Homo sapiens sapiens. And canoes, that's why. Probably, so when I was in school many, 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 many years ago, it was pretty much widely accepted that the first humans into the Americas probably came about 12 to 15,000 years ago, that ice age, the last ice age. But because Cro-Magnum, Homo sapiens sapiens, had canoes, we now see indication of them going all the way down to here, maybe even further. And in fact, they just found footprints of somebody in what now it's a uh, stone, but it was probably a swampy area from about 25,000 years ago in present day New Mexico. And so they were much more mobile, much more advanced, probably not just looking for food, but we can see trading. I mean, just things that picked up so quickly. It's kind of amazing. But more advanced hunting techniques. We saw better spears with now not just spear pits with fire, but also um, rock and then other types of tips. Bow and arrow we began to see. And so much more advanced hunting. And they could bring down bigger animals and protein. But what's the big advantage? That fire gave him a protein. Remember that from Friday? Yeah. Easier to digest. Easier to digest means more energy for what? Brain brains. Yeah. Big brains. And it's kind of amazing how 
the number of people by 2 million BCE, or two, I'm sorry, by 15,000 BCE, right here, also just boomed up to 2 million, just overnight. All these people appeared and the number of people accelerated. And they started having cooperation. And once you have cooperation with bigger, bigger groups, you need rules. You need rules. Rules mean government, laws, power. And we have more permanent homes. Now, this is where we still get, I've always talked about cavemen because the caves survived. We saw like cave painting. Southern France, we found some of the most brilliant cave paintings uh, ever discovered. We, we see some all over, including the Americas. Even sculptures, usually kind of fertility things, or maybe just, who knows? We thought they were good looking, so their idea of good looking, we copied them. But more permanent, but not fully permanent, but you can see the beginnings of farming. And these are some of the cave paintings in La Salle, France, and that's Neanderthal, and that's, so I put the comparison, Neanderthal versus pro -Mango. Big difference. <laughs> I'm here to draw of what they hunted, what their life was like, what they saw. It's, it's amazing how things have changed and how you can see the Neanderthals could not compete. Here's a few more of the paintings, and that is one of a whole uh, pro magnum in the Americas, about 14,000. And then we have the Ice Ages. And the Ice Ages came, there were four biggies, but the one that we care most about is this big Ice Age that came about 12, 13,000 BCE. So it started ending, you can start seeing in steps after about 10,000 BCE. And frozen, therefore, the ice level drop, or ocean level drop. That's why we get the land bridge here, connected where people and animals could go back and forth. Um, obviously, land, there was a lot more land. That's um, because the oceans were so much more shallow. So you see kind of a different, well, you can really see it here. All this area now, which is the Bay of Biscay, that was all land. And here, this was ice and land, which is now the very shallow North Sea. And so in the North Sea, there's these, these sandbars that are really dangerous for ships to this day, and they're just right under the water for hundreds of miles because of the remnants of this old ice age. And we're jumping right to here. That's where you get the move, great movement of populations. Hey, the ice age, you got to search more for food. And so you get the big wave of pearl bank coming home to Australia and around here. And last couple things in really quick. Therefore, cooperation became even more important because of this migration, always finding war. It is during this time that they mastered fire. And you start seeing examples of them actually making fire, not keeping a permanent fire pit. And mammoths probably disappeared at this time. They were hunted out. And mammoths are huge. And so they have to be hunted by cooperation. And they found bits of mammals for years afterwards and fossilized mammals, but at the end of the 18th century, a full mammoth almost perfectly intact was found in Siberia. And that blew them away. Where, you know, where is this animal now? Um, I should add, they found it, and of course they ate it. They ate part of it. The meat was kind of preserved. I bet it doesn't look tough after 15,000 years, but they did eat it. And we're jumping right to here. You see in more and more art, almost all was probably fertility, or maybe men do it. Men drew them, and that was their idea of an attractive female. But you see a lot of women representing fertility, animals. And when the Ice Age began to recede, that's when everything would shift. Areas where the Ice Age would recede, and you start seeing the Middle East. You don't need it in these dates, but you can see how the years kind of rippled for a thousand years. So this is what we need. We got hot and dry, and that led to dramatic food shortages. And they had no choice. They had no choice but to resort to slash and burn agriculture, the whole thing that would be they would burn, and hopefully a num um, one of the things that happens is fire does promote seeds, 
on a number of things, especially trees, but also for plants, especially the earliest forms of wheat. And they thought the fire, whenever they would roll fire, the seeds would be transmitted because of the fire and they would get more. And that's how they learned how to do cultivating our crops. And you can see this, and that is on the Tigris River. And thus, with that, because of climate change, we start seeing the beginnings of civilization. And with that, we are going to watch. We'll start it today, we'll finish it tomorrow after the quiz. We're going to watch Gun, Germs, and Steel. And I really like Gun, Germs, and Steel. It's a book by Jared Diamond, and they did a thing by National Geographic a while ago. Great video where it talks about why some societies function and some didn't. I think it's a great way to start this. And I enjoy it, and I haven't seen it for a few years, so that's when I said, I want to watch it again, and it is that good. And so, we're going to have a quiz tomorrow though, over chapter one, right? Any questions? Only things in that term? All right. Yes, this is a quiz. So this is the worksheet for the video. You had to rule it. Huh? You had to rule it. The quiz will be tomorrow. So, I really like this, and it does a good job. It's actually quite controversial. The main elements of what it says are not controversial, but um, it's, it's fascinating to me how after all this is not being 100% certain what happened. Give me a sec. I have to... I'm sorry. 